Okay, good evening everyone. Today we have a Nakamichi BX100 cassette deck that has been brought in to be fixed. That's about all I know. We didn't really discuss what it does or doesn't do. But uh, it actually has the original box. So let's take it out of the original box and have a look. Okay, so it's out of the box and it appears to two head cassette deck. It appears like it's all electronical controls here. So this is all the stuff where it's just got a regular clicker switch and when you hit it the mechanic should kick in and move things around. So we have our eject door which seems to work. We've got recording levels. There's a thing for master fader up and down, so I'm assuming that might be the headphone volume or it might be for when you record, like if you were going to do a fade out. Without reading the manual, I'm not 100% sure. Um, Dolby noise resistance, which I'm assuming is Dolby B. Tone selector ZX, SX, or EX. Be type 1, type 2, or type 4. I think that's probably the type of tape you're using, maybe because um, type 1 is normal, quote-unquote, type 2 would be the um, high bias, and then type 4 is metal, I think, right? Um, it's been a while since I've worked on cassettes or worked with them, so... And then EQ microseconds, 120 or 70, whatever that means, and MPX filter on or off, automatic repeat, memory, a little timer. Got some uh, meters there. Okay, I suppose it's time to go get a cassette, plug it in. We'll plug our headphones into it. That way we don't get a copyright strike. And we'll see what happens. Okay, so I've got headphones. Yay. And I've got a cassette, deck, cassette tape that I made myself. Yay. Okay, we turned it on. I heard a little noise in the headphones. I heard the amp kick in. Got some little meters here. See a check button. Let's put that in. It needs to be rewound, so let's hit rewind. It looked like it got started a little sluggish. It's moving good now. But it looked like it got off to a slow start. <clears throat> Again, I'm not sure if this is uh, really needs much work or it just needs a quick tune-up clean-up. Might need, you know, clean and demagnetize the heads and check a couple things and then we'll be back in business. This is a Type 1 normal bias tape, so I guess I'll push that button for normal bias. I'm pretty sure that's what that means. Okay, so we're... 25% rewound, let's hit stop, and then we'll hit play, and I'll just have to tell you if it sounds okay or not. Okay, well it sounds okay to me. I don't see where there's a place to adjust the volume level in the headphones. It's kind of where it is. But uh, as you can see, the, we're recorded kind of roughly unity. It seems like the right channel is stronger than the left, but that could just very well be the tape. Um, I'll compare that in another player. So, it appears like it's working okay. I forgot I owned that. This is actually a cassette of some different 7-inch uh, and LP records. And uh, I used to put them on cassette deck to take in my 1983 car, which I had up till 2001. <laughs> uh, so, anyway. Okay, so rewinding some more. And let's see what it does. Yeah.
Okay, it apparently was part of the recording because now my volume is equal in both channels now that I'm on a different song. So, that sounds good. Let's just uh, rewind here. And... So far everything looks pretty good. Here's your rewind. Stop again. Play. Sounds okay to me. Try fast forward. Works okay. So it appears like all the functions are good. So I'm going to have to run under the assumption that uh, our friend here put this in the box a long time ago. Um, maybe in a move or something and hasn't unearthed it in a long time and just wanted to have it checked out to make sure everything was good. So I think we'll just proceed to do some routine maintenance on it and just uh, pop it open, have a look, make sure there's nothing glaring at me saying this is going to explode and or fall apart in the next uh, week. Okay, there's our tape fully rewound. So if everything is okay inside of this deck and, and it's working and you know, we'll make sure the belts are healthy and we'll do just some general maintenance on it. And uh, I'm curious if this will fast forward on the fly because it's playing the song here. Let's see. Will it go back to play when I let go of fast forward? No, it doesn't. So this one doesn't jog. That's okay. I've had a few that do. Okay, so the, the general functions of it check out. Let me check one other thing. And yeah, noise resistance, I can hear the effect of that. Man, I, t I recorded this tape loud, but it's all within safe parameters for this type of tape, but I apparently like to record my tapes loud. Okay, that's a... Apparently that's like a, this thing that says EQ120 or 70 is some kind of maybe a low pass. When it's out it's brighter and when it's in it's darker. So it sounded a little bright. I will have to look at what some of these features actually are so I know what they are because I'm not sure. But uh, And then I'm curious about this master fader up and down business. It's listed as up and when I push on down it doesn't do anything. At least that I can tell. Maybe I need to hold it. Okay, I don't get any function out of this master fader, but that might have something to do with recording. Uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll check the manual and see if there's something there. But uh, at first guess, if I were to you know, be looking at this on the shelf at a store and I asked the guy if I could test it and I did um, I would assume this is working properly so pop it open anyway just because. Okay so lids off and we're inside <clears throat> our big filter caps here that go with our power supply those are Shoei brand S-H-O-E-I and everything looks healthy I don't see anything that sparks any concern. I can't read the brand on these just from the angle I'm at, but they're made in Japan. Most everything, capacitors and all this, appears to be fine. No, uh, nothing here looks blown up in any way, shape, or form. That wire wrapping job is a little, that's a little more chaotic than I'm used to, but I'm noticing there's a lot more point-to-pointish -point stuff in here. And uh, you can tell it's a little bit more modular. <clears throat> and you can tell I'm tired by the fact that my voice is going down the drain. But that's okay. This is the EQ board over here. There are some trim pots on it to make some adjustments if you need to, but if it ain't broke, we're not going to fix it. And we should inspect the belt. The main drive belt is this one right here. 
and I'm curious to see if that is showing any slack back and forth when we run the tape deck. So we'll turn it on again. And we'll try play. Okay, it looks okay. I'm not seeing any slackage there. We'll try rewind. Rewind does not use that one. That's only for the play, apparently. Yep, that's just the play belt. And the rewind and fast forward belts must be back behind farther. Must be back and farther in the mechanism. Okay, and then the, there is one belt that comes out over here for the um, counter. And that one feels, the belt for the counter feels a little loose, but it's not really slippy. If I put my hand on the counter wheel to, you know, try to stop it with a little bit of finger pressure, slow it down, it belt can override me, so that belt is still okay. I don't see any issues at all with this thing other than just a little bit of dust. So we will clean and demagnetize the heads and wipe the dust rabbits off of it and we'll call it OK. NPF, no problems found. That's never a bad thing. Again, with mystery equipment that maybe hasn't been operated in a long time, it's sometimes good just to check it out. This is for a friend of mine, so I have no problem checking it out and cleaning it up. It's all good. Okay, so on the computer I found the owner's manual at hifienginecom They have lots of good stuff. And number five is that master fader. I said to myself, what is that? Mm -hmm. Well, here it is. The button is used to perform a fade in or fade out during recording. And that pretty much answers that. And then there's tape selector bias switches, which is 12, which I was right. Um, and then the MPX filter switch suppresses the 19K multiplex carrier signal or Dolby noise reduction when recording from FM stereo broadcasts. Okay, so there you go. Now you know. And the memory switch will automatically make it stop at zero when rewinding or fast forwarding. So that's convenient. Okay, so now we know. I think that's all I really needed to know out of the manual. Everything else is working good, so we will demagnetize the heads. I've already cleaned them off here. We clean them off with uh, a little bit of uh, isopropyl alcohol and a Q-tip. And we'll go get our tape demagnetizer and demag the heads, which I'll do that on camera so y'all can watch how that goes. It's pretty easy. And uh, and we'll be happy monkey. Okay, so just to demagnetize tape heads, I'm using a Nortronix head demagnetizer. And basically, you just go right up next to the head without actually coming dead on surface, push the button, you'll feel the unit humming, you can actually hear it humming against the case, and then we just gently back away. Like that. And that's it. That's all you gotta do. Pretty straightforward. We'll see if that made any audio change. Sounded darn good before.